डॉक्टर महेश कल्याण शेट्टी असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर इन दिस सेशन वील डिस्कस अबाउट द स्टैंडर्ड प्रॉक्टर कॉम्पैक्शन टेस्ट द लर्निंग आउटकम विल बी एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू डिटरमाइन कॉम्पैक्शन प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ सॉइल यूजिंग स्टैंडर्ड प्रॉक्टर टेस्ट द कॉम्पैक्शन फेनामिना can be explained with the help of this figure which has been identified first by proctor in 1933 and he says that there exists a definite relationship between the soil moisture content and the dry density on compaction of the soil for a specific amount of compacting energy so from this figure it is very much clear that initially as we add a water and do the compaction the density of the soil increases and thereafter the volume of the soil in increases therefore the density goes on reducing therefore we get a compaction curve of this shape where initially the density and the water content both goes on increasing and later on after one specific point the water content increases but the dry density goes on decreasing and from this compaction curve we can get a maximum dry density and <coughs> a minimum uh, and the moisture content at which the density is maximum that is called optimum moisture content for the evaluation of these two property of the soil there are certain instruments used which are developed by r r pocter and uh, in the picture we can see uh, some containers are used uh, which are called as mold and a rammer is used for the compaction and in the standard proctor test we are supposed to fill the soil in the mold in three layers and this particular rammer has got some specific weight of 2.6 kg and the fall height of fall of this uh, rammer is 305 mm so in this way we have to give a 25 blows for each layer and we have to fill the mold in three layers we will see the process in detail in the subsequent slide so these are the instruments in detail first one is a cylindrical metal mold as you can see here uh, which is having a diameter of 10 cm and the internal effective height of almost 127.3 mm and a capacity of 1000 ml then we have a base plate which can be detached that is called detachable base plate then there is a collar of 5 cm in effective height and there is a rammer of 2.6 kg mass which is falling through a height of 310 cm and and by doing so the compacting energy is used for this experiment is around 6065 kg cm per 1000 ml so as i told that this soil is to be filled in this mold in three layers and every layer we give 25 blows so in total the compacting energy transfer to the soil in the standard proctor test is 6065 kg cm the procedure if we see about 3 kg of air dried and pulverized soil passing 4.75 mm sieve is to be used then the quantity of water to be added for the first test or the first trial it, it depends upon the probable value of optimum water content usually we have a guideline of this particular water to be considered for the first trial as 4% for coarse grain soil and 10% for fine grain soil so we can begin with these water contents so depending upon the type of soil then this water is mixed with the soil and placed in the mold and 25 blows are given with the help of the rammer which we discussed in the previous slide and these blows are to be uniformly distributed all over the surface so that 
the compacted height will be around one third of the mold. Then we shall go to the second layer. So before we go for the second layer, the first compacted layer is scratched with the help of uh, sharp edge tools so that there will be an, uh, a grip between the layers and the second layer is also given a 25 blows and the third layer is also given after this and the compacted layer the third compacted layer should have a projection not more than 6 mm into the collar in this way we fill the mold in three layers then the collar is removed and the excess soil is trimmed off to make it level with the help of mold and the weight of mold with base plate is taken then the representative sample is taken from the center of the compacted specimen so this all compacted soil is to be removed now and approximately from the central portion we shall take a soil for determination of water content and the bulk density of the soil can be determined and knowing the water content dry density also can be determined by the following equation so the bulk density is mass upon volume and the dry density will be a bulk density upon 1 plus water content in this way we can find the dry density of the soil so this process was for the trial number one in this way we shall go for number of trials with increased water content so for a second trial we have to increase the water content usually by two to four percent and we have to repeat the same process as been done for the first trial and in the second trial also we get a dry density and water content then we shall move to the next trial with increased water content and we shall repeat the process again so that we will get number of dry densities corresponding to different water content. Now the test is repeated on soil samples with increasing water content and the corresponding dry densities obtained is determined. And this all data can be used to plot a curve which we call it as compaction curve. In fact, we do the experiment to generate this compaction curve wherein on x axis the water content is plotted on y axis dry unit weight is plotted and the black dots indicates the trial so the first black dot indicates the first trial second one indicates the second trial third trial fourth trial likewise you have to take number of trials till we find that the density is decreasing as compared to the previous trial so when I join all these points, I will get a smooth curve that we call it as compaction curve. So once we get a compaction curve, we can find uh, two very important compaction property. One is called optimum moisture content. So where we get a peak, where we get a maximum dry density, at that point, the corresponding water content is called OMC, that is optimum moisture content and the point at which we get a maximum density that is called maximum dry density and later on we can also plot a zero air wide line which indicates the theoretical relationship between the water content and dry unit weight for zero air whites now with the help of this review questions we would like to understand the process so these are the two questions take a pause answer these questions and you can resume to the video first question optimum moisture content is defined as the water content corresponding to four options are given second one the weight of the rammer used in is light compaction so the pro standard proctor test is also called as light compaction test four options are given take a pause get the answer and resume these are the answers for the first one optimum moisture content is defined as the water content corresponding to maximum dry density and the second one the weight of rammer used in is light compaction test is 2.6 kg that we discussed earlier 
These are the references used for this presentation. Thank you.